In 1978, a loving but financially struggling family was in the middle of running their pet store in Oakland, California. The young couple, Jules and Ben, are assisting customers together with their daughter, Rhea. Rhea becomes interested in an axolotl and curiously asks her mother about it. Jules, who is studying a veterinary program, begins to talk about the axolotl, saying that it is an amphibian that would hunt like a salamander when taken out of the water. Upon closing their pet store, a man enters. The man introduces himself as Amos Tilbury, an attorney whose partner worked with Ben's family years ago. Mr. Tilbury informs Ben that his deceased mother, Linda, had an old coastal property in Hobbits Bay, Oregon that was bought in 1935. As it turns out, Ben's father, Alec, left the property to Linda, which apparently she had kept hidden from everyone. Since all of his family members already passed away, Mr. Tilbury mentions that the property will now be inherited by Ben. He also finds out that his father and sister, Rosie, did not die in a car accident but instead drowned in Hobbits Bay. Ben wonders why the property was overlooked for so long and why his parents never mentioned the property to him. Thinking of their financial struggle, Ben decides to take the old property. Some time later, Ben drives with Jules, Rhea, and their family dog Archie to Oregon to check the property. They find a remote but spacious house located in the middle of the forest. Uninhabited for decades, the house appears to have a dark and eerie vibe. It remains fully firmish, looking as if everything was deliberately left in its place. The house is weathered and overgrown with vines, but on the contrary has a beautiful view of the beach. At the back of the house is an old tank that used to provide storage of water. Going against Jules' advice, Ben casually enters the tank. He finds nothing, aside from an old lantern on the ground. Ben picks it up and takes it on his way up. When Rhea asks if she can enter the tank, Ben instructs her never to go inside. He closes down the tank's cover before returning to the house. In the meantime, the family moves into the house and proceeds to remove all of the wooden boards nailed on the doors and windows. From time to time, Rhea and Jules spend time resting on the grasslands near the coast. One day while cleaning around the house, Jules and Ben find various newspaper clippings around the area. Among the news clippings feature the mysterious disappearance of a ship that ran aground in the early 1900s. Jules also uncovers various reports about Ben's father and sister, claiming that they drowned in Hobbit's Bay but their bodies were never recovered. To their surprise, Jules and Ben also find out that Linda, who was pregnant with him at the time, was suspected for their disappearance. Just then, the two are startled by a loud noise coming from the window, but remain unconcerned. Later that night, Jules takes Rhea to bed. She reads Rhea a bedtime story and waits for her to fall asleep before leaving the room. Meanwhile, Jules and Ben are inside their bedroom as Jules shows Ben Linda's diary which she found in the house. The couple then read the diary together, containing entries from April 27, 1946 to May 5, 1946. According to Linda, moving in the new house helped her find her new self and get rid of the dark sadness. She was pregnant with her second child, Ben, while happily spending the day with Rosie on the coast. Back at their house, Alec called in a man to help him build a water tank at the back of their house. They drilled more than a hundred feet to access a deep spring that has the sweetest and most nourishing water. Linda adds that she received an anonymous package that day, which turns out to be the newspaper clippings of the deaths and disappearances at Hobbit's Bay. She told Alec about the newspapers, but Alec insisted that she throw it away. That night, Alec was up all night in the middle of a storm. She became worried when she could no longer find Alec anywhere after the storm subsided. Three days after Alec's mysterious disappearance, Linda sought the help of the local police, only for her to be informed that Alec will return. After reading, Jules and Ben notice that there are missing pages in the diary. Ben begins to wonder what happened in the remaining five days, knowing that his sister Rosie disappeared on the night of May 10. He becomes agitated, expressing his frustration towards his mother for never telling the truth. In the middle of the night, Rhea wakes up from her sleep after hearing a strange sound. She stares warily at the door of her room and up the ceiling, trying to find where the sound came from. When she checks under her bed, she observes a sudden movement from the ground, causing her to run out of her room. Rhea alerts her mother Jules, claiming that someone is trying to get in the house. Jules and Ben get up from their bed and walk around the house. Ben goes outside while Jules checks on the doors and windows, but both of them find nothing. The couple goes back to sleep and Jules has a nightmare about her late in-laws. The next day, Jules finds Ben inside a storage shed stocked with old tools, gas, use wires, fertilizers, and ammonium nitrate. Jules tells Ben that she is starting to feel uneasy about the house, but Ben relieves her that it is only their first night. Afterwards, he heads into the tank in hopes of bringing back the water system in the house. 
Ben finds the water pump and manages to open it. However, he cuts his hand in the process, causing drops of his blood to fall in the water. Back in the house, Ben shares that he found a tunnel and a cave behind the tank wall. Ben also shows Jules an organism that he found in the tank. Jules tries to examine the organism, deducing that it may be an amphibious larva that is not fully formed. She becomes fascinated by the organism as she had not seen anything like it. Jules decides to preserve the larva in a cooler, wanting to study more about it. Outside, Rhea is spending time with her dog Archie, when she discovers that the water tank is not fully covered. She peeks into the hole and shouts out in the tank until a mysterious organism shows up in the water. Rhea screams in shock, catching the attention of Jules and Ben. She tells them about the mysterious organism she saw and how it emits the same sound that she heard in her room last night. Ben immediately closes the water tank, assuring Rhea that there are different animals inside. At that moment, Mariel Tingi, a realtor sent by Mr. Tilbury, comes into their house. Mariel apologizes for suddenly barging in and later explains that Mr. Tilbury asked her to visit them and talk about selling the property. Later, Mariel walks with Ben and Jules on the coast to tell them more about Ben's inheritance. She tells them her father came into the house years ago with a buyer, but Linda's lawyer was convinced that Linda would never sell a house. It is revealed that the property does not only include the house, but extends to several private coves and hills nearby. According to Mariel, many locals protested against Alec buying the property because they believed that the place was cursed. When Jules asked about the curse, Mariel explains that there was a major earthquake in 1700 which tore open the coast and sent a tsunami all the way to Japan. From then on, the locals thought that the area was cursed and voluntarily abandoned Hobbit's Bay, thinking that the ground would open up and make people disappear. Before leaving, Mariel informs Ben that they have an interested buyer for their property, who is willing to pay a generous amount. That night, Mariel is on her way back to the city when she is suddenly attacked and dragged by an unknown entity. Around the same time, Jules wakes up from her sleep, claiming that she heard an unusual sound. She goes out of the room to check downstairs and finds a suspicious-looking creature with claws and teeth from the window. Jules alerts Ben about the creature and insists that they should leave the house as soon as they can. Ben assures her that they will be calling Mariel and agree to have the property sold. The next day, Ben returns to the storage shed, continuing to repair the generator of the house. He tries to drink water afterwards, but only finds a black liquid dripping from their faucet. As a result, Ben goes back into the water tank to repair the faucet problem. Inside, Ben finds that the entire tank is almost full. When he checks the pump, he sees that the water is still clean, so he looks around the tank. Ben recovers a dead raccoon in the water, along with a necklace and a torn cloth. He picks up the dead raccoon and shows it to Jules, claiming that it was the raccoon that she saw from the window last night. Ben also shows her the necklace, which happens to belong to her deceased sister Rosie. Seeing the necklace, Jules suggests that they call the police. Later that day, Ben is driving their car out in the forest to go to a gas station. He finds Mariel's car on the way, prompting him to briefly look around. Ben stops in his tracks and stares in horror at the sight Mariel's severed body lying on the ground. He runs back to his car, trying to contact the police, before heading back to their house as quickly as he can. Around the same time, Jules reads another bedtime story to her daughter Rhea. When she returns to the living room, she notices drops of gooey liquid on the floor. Jules follows the direction of the gooey liquid which leads to a door, but the door is locked. She uses a key to enter the room, where she finds the missing pages on her late mother-in-law's diary. Just then, a strong force closes the door, locking Jules inside the room. She looks through the small space of the door and catches sight of a shadowy figure. Worrying for Rhea's safety, Jules quickly escapes the room through the window. She runs back into the living room towards Rhea's room, but she slips from stepping on the gooey liquid. She fortunately reunites with Rhea, just as Ben arrives at the house. Jules mentions that the tank lid was open, suspecting that something came into their house. Ben, still shaken, insists that they should leave. He tells Jules about what happened to Mariel in the forest. In reply, Jules reveals that she found the missing pages of Linda's diary. Apparently, Linda lied to the police reports about Alec and Rosie. As it turns out, Alec and Rosie did not drown at the beach, but died in their house rather. Jules is convinced that there is something in their property, which is why no one lives in the house and Linda never mentioned it to Ben. In Linda's last diary entry, she warns that whoever finds her diary must run for their lives. Ben and Jules hurriedly pack their things, but are interrupted by a sound of a siren coming from a distance. Ben comes out of the cottage, thinking that the police are coming. Meanwhile, a local police officer arrives in the forest. 
he comes out of the car to briefly check on the area, but finds nothing. However, as soon as he returns in the car, a huge black gooey creature that looks like a mutated axolotl reveals itself and sneaks behind him. The police officer tries to reach for his gun, but the creature quickly attacks him. The officer struggles to crawl away from the creature, and yet the creature mercilessly chews him down. At that moment, Ben arrives and witnesses the scene. Unable to help the officer, Ben decides to run back to the house. While hurriedly closing the windows and doors, Ben tells Jules about the creature, mentioning that it looked like a reptile with no eyes. They begin to suspect that the nest of the creature could be somewhere behind the water tank. Eventually, Jules and Ben eventually realize that they have awakened the creature after opening the water pump. Since the creature has no eyes, it can only rely on sounds. Ben deduces that they can make some noise and lure the creature back into the tank. On the other hand, Jules is against the idea of Ben going inside the water tank. Despite her protests, Ben urges her and Rhea to stay upstairs and lock the doors. Afterwards, Ben goes to the storage shed and creates a makeshift explosive using fertilizer and the remaining gas. He becomes startled after seeing blood outside the tank, but he goes inside nonetheless. Ben carefully walks through the water until he sees the police officer's lifeless body floating around. He shuts down the water pump and briefly sees the creature in the water, but it suddenly disappears before his eyes. Ben crawls into the cave behind the water pump, trying to find a good location for the makeshift explosive when his flashlight suddenly turns off. Nonetheless, he plants the explosive in the cave. Ben activates the explosion, but it goes off too early as it blows up before he could step out of the cave. This prompts the creature to catch up to him while he swims back to the tank and attempts to head back up to the hole. Ben manages to break free for a while until the creature returns and bites him down. Inside the house, Jules and Rhea warily stare at the tank opening from their windows. She hears a scratching noise coming from the door, only to find out that it was their family dog, Archie, trying to get inside. Jules locks the door back as soon as Archie enters, subtly relieved. When she returns to the windows, she hears Archie screaming from the tank. Jules decides to leave Rhea, assuring her that she will come back to her as soon as she gets Ben out. On her way out, however, the door starts rocking as if another creature is trying to forcefully enter the room. Rhea screams in fright, and Jules instructs her to stay quiet so they will not attract the creature. In the meantime, Jules pushes the cabinet over to the door, trying to stop the creature from coming in. On the other hand, a third creature emerges from the window, attracted by the sound of Rhea's screams. Rhea is immediately taken by the creature from the window. At the same time, the other creature marches into the door and overpowers Jules, prompting the cabinet to fall onto her. As the creature is about to attack her, Jules picks up a lantern and shoves it in the creature's face. The creature becomes sensitive towards the light, screeching before stepping away from her. Outside, Rhea is being dragged by the creature into the tank. Ben, who has just succeeded in climbing up the tank, finds Rhea but is too weakened by his injuries. He shouts in agony, unable to help his daughter. Jules arrives shortly after successfully evading the creature. She shouts at the hole looking for any signs of Rhea but to no avail. In the meantime, she helps Ben get back inside the house. She takes a fabric from the mop and soaks it with acid cleaners, before wrapping it on her arms. Ben watches Jules, warning her that the creatures cannot be killed. In reply, Jules says that she only needs time to keep them away while she picks up their daughter. Knowing that the creatures are amphibians that breathe through their skin, Jules believes that the acid cleaners will be able to burn them. Before leaving the house, she tells Ben to get out of the property if she does not make it back. Later, Jules enters the tank while carrying another soaked mop, a rake, and a bottle of acid cleaner. Inside, she uses the soaked mop and turns it into a torch. Jules slowly looks around while calling Rhea's name. Just as she hears Rhea's voice, Jules is surrounded by the creatures. In defense, Jules pours the acid cleaner on the water around her. One of the creatures aggressively attacks Jules from underneath, pulling her into the water. While she tries to fight, the other creature quietly observes them nearby. After much struggle, Jules grabs on the rake and fatally stabs the creature. She finds the second creature from a distance, but the creature descends back to the water. The second creature attacks her from behind, prompting Jules to lose hold of the rake. She swims down, looking for the rake, and finds it in time before the second creature bites her down. Jules manages to counterattack and stops the second creature using the rake. Despite her injuries, Jules rushes to the cave behind the water pump, finding Rhea near the nest of the creatures. At that moment, several other creatures are slowly springing out. Rhea swims ahead to the water tank, while Jules lights another torch to scare off the remaining creatures. 
Afterwards, Jules carries Rhea and hurriedly swims to the ladder. The two climb through the hole and are able to close the tank lid right before one of the creatures reaches them. Jules brings Rhea to their car and lets her stay inside with her dog Archie. She finds the police officer's gun on the ground, carrying it with her on her way back to Ben. Inside the house, Jules helps Ben up and holds him while they rush to the car. Meanwhile, one of the creatures emerges from the tank. It heads towards their car and is about to attack them, but Jules fires the gun in its mouth. Jules drives the car away, with them successfully escaping the property. After a while, Jules stops the car in the middle of the road and bursts into tears. She looks back at Rhea shortly after, assuring her that everything will be alright. Throughout the end, Jules starts the car and drives as far as they can from Hobbit's Bay. Years later, a group of construction workers gather in the property for a development plan in the area. They aim to enter the tank, having no clue of the creatures that are still inside. From the beginning, the tank has its own charm in terms of depicting simple monster creepiness and suspense moments. But because it was promoted and labeled as a horror thriller, it is worth mentioning that it has failed in executing its horror genre. The film is rather executed as a typical thriller that strongly features monsters. Nothing much is original in terms of the plot. In addition, it takes a long and somewhat frustrating time before the action begins. There are flashback scenes that help build up the existence of the monsters, but still, the scenes are dragging which may be too uninteresting for the viewers. Also, although the story provides much build up on the family's secret, the tank does not seem to execute this angle properly enough to create an emotional impact. Some scenes are questionable as well. Suddenly, the pet store, their family business, was out of the picture. None of the family conflicts were resolved as there is still a threat against their property. The film could have done better in clarifying it. Even so, The Tank is a fairly decent film that is good enough for one-time viewing.